hello, hello, hello. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for the season finale of Greenleaf, baby. I haven't even got my camera all the way together. It is currently 2 o'clock in the morning. I review Empire and Star. I should have just started with Greenleaf. It gave me everything that Empire and Star did not give me, okay? It was good from top to bottom. It was an hour that was an hour long, but I wasn't trying to get through it. I was like, I was loving every moment of it. It was fast paced, but not too fast. Nothing seemed rushed. I was like, come through. I'm like, let me find out. Who produced this show? I don't, I need to know who produced this show. I need to find out. I mean, it just, <laughs> it was just gas. It gave me, it gave me what I needed of a season god dang on finale. So, in the beginning, we see many things going on as Charity is at the church, at the church, as Charity is on tour, singing with the little singing group and Jabari looking on, you know. We see Bishop, he having Marisol pack up his clothes. And I'm like, Bishop, you moving out the house? Where you going, Bishop, with all your suits? And then I'm like, wait, but is he packing his own suits? Is them Kevin suits? Whose suits is they? Well, yeah, we see they his suits. And he tell Marisol, yep, pack them all. Move them on to the dang on guest room. So then we see also that we see Zara. Zora. Zora, who is at the um, dress shop getting fitted for her uh, um, cotillion dress. And you know, she tried on, you know, she tried on, and we see the bruises. It's bruises on both arms, and the girl like, girl, what happened? What's wrong with your arms, girl? She's like, let me get you a shawl. First of all, a shawl and bruises don't even match. She needed a long sleeve dress. I'm just saying if she gone, but you know it, it is what it is. But yeah, they put a shawl over her arms to cover the bruises on her arms. Um, we also see May, and she's looking through like an old um, box of stuff. So you see an old picture of her and her sister as kids. You see the little um, story about Mac when he was the man of the year. And then she finds her mother's pearl, which is the reason she was looking through this old box of stuff. And we also see Charity singing to Jabari. And Jabari looking back like... Yep, mm-hmm. I like her. So, that's how the whole episode starts off. So, from there, we see the pearls that May put out of this old box. She has them separated into two sets of pearls because she has two granddaughters. And she gives one set to Zora, and she gives one set to um, Sophia. And they're all sitting together. And she starts talking about, you know, how a pearl is made, and you two are both, are both pearls, and you're just, you know, oh, you're just the best thing ever. And then what do we hear? Hog, 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 hog. I'm like, who be a rude as hell? My mama and my daddy always told me, any man who be outside and honk the horn for you, don't respect you, don't be with him. If he ain't got enough balls, ain't got enough respect for you to come knock on your door and say, hey, can I see Jay Lee? Hey, can I see Zora? Is Zora here? If that person can't do that, dang worth your cootie cat. Dang worth your time. And that little Isaiah boy was outside just honking and honking and honking. And my thing is, you honk one time, okay. But you can't honk a second time two seconds later. Don't be rushing me. I ain't no slave. You don't... And I come running. No, I'm not a dog. I don't go fetch. So, Zora leaves. And May notices it's a little something off between Zora and Sophia. And she's like, is everything okay with you guys? And then, you know, Sophia's like, yes. You know, it's, I don't... I just don't like her boyfriend. May knew exactly what that meant. She was like, you know, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. You know, she's not going to listen to you now, but eventually she'll do what's right. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, May. You know, I guess so. So, May was like, you know, give us some time. And we see from there that Mavis calls um, May back. Mavis was playing by Oprah Ram Oprah. Ram Oprah Winfrey and she's May's sister. You know, May had been calling her since Mac died and May Mavis ain't never called her back, but she did. And she's like, I heard you looking for what you looking for me for. And Mavis don't really want to talk to May. 
And Meg was like, I found some more paperwork, but I think your club might still be yours. And, you know, I think you might still own it. So we had that whole scene. The next scene we see is Meg getting dressed for the cotillion. In a nice, nice ball gown, masquerade, all black ensemble. Yeah, come through, May. And Marisol come in like, Kevin here. Dang how he said it, but that's how I said it. Kevin here. Oh, charity old husband here. Okay. So May go in there, of course, in his son's room. And May like, why are you here? Okay. What you here for, boy? And Kevin like, you know. I'm here to apologize. And you should be, as May said. And he's like, you know, I get it. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I should not have left like that. You know, but I was having trouble accepting who I am and what I've done. But I've accepted that now. And, you know, I'm sorry for how I left. I'm here to apologize. But I'm here to be a father to my son. You know, where are they? May, May was like... You can't be coming up in here demanding nothing. You left them high and dry. You know how maybe it's like you know you left. You can't come making no demands. I'll let Charity know. Well, no, she did tell him that you know Charity went on tour, took the baby with her. How she you know found a sitter and got all that stuff situated. So, but he was still trying to figure out like where they were, and she was like, I'll let her know that she was looking for her, and when she ready, she'll give you a call. He was like. He's still my son. I have rights. And she was like, I would love to see you fight for them rights in the court. So everything that you did will come to light. I'm like, didn't that man just tell you he okay with who he is? You think he gonna care about going to court and people find out that he gay? I'm assuming he finna live his gay lifestyle and he's accepted who he is. So you can no longer threaten him with, if you don't do as I say, we gonna let everybody know you gay. He was like, look, like I told you, that's still my son. Do what you gonna do. And she was like, you know what? I'll let you know that you're looking for her. And you know what I'm saying? Marisol can let you out. Marisol, bring Kevin's car around. Well, okay. Put him out real fast, May. He then calls Aaron. You got Aaron no speed dial. Okay. So he calls Aaron and Aaron's like, how did it go? So clearly Aaron knew he was going back. He's like, it went exactly how I knew it would. And he was like, well, you know I'm here for you. And he was like, yeah, I know. You know what? I think I'm going to need your help. So clearly, he finna go for try to do custody with his son. He gonna try to get some kind of custody or visitation or something to where she can't just up and leave um, without the boy. Now, I don't know how that's gonna go in the court system because you did leave for a couple months. You know, you've been gone for a little bit of time. But, you know, we shall see how that play out in next season. Um, next, we see the families at the cotillion. You know, everyone's there. That boy Isaiah, Zora, her mama, her daddy taking pictures, and he don't want to be there. He in the background smacking gum. How you chewing gum in the picture, boy? You supposed to be still. <clears throat> and, you know, so they take their pictures, and then they switch, and then they do um, Sophia, her mom, her grandparents. And Darius gets in the picture. Okay, he's an official boy. You are an official boyfriend. You in any kind of family pictures. Okay, that's the official role. Um... So, we see Isaiah, like, I got a limo for us to get into afterwards. She's like, I can't go. And he's like, what you mean? But I got a limo. She's like, I said I can't go. He already upset. This night ain't about you, little boy. It ain't about you, little boy. Go on, head on. But we going to see what happens with that. We see May and Bishop still beefing because when the photographer was like, let's get a picture of, you know, the grandparents. Bishop was like, Pfft. Like, he was just appalled to have to take a picture with his wife. I mean, y'all came there together. You thought y'all can come together. Nobody would want pictures with y'all two together. That ain't how it go in that world, Bishop. As they taking pictures, they're talking back and forth. You know, like, under smiles. Like, yeah, you moved all your clothes from over there. You know, that was crazy. Yeah, people talk, and they still smile. You can't tell they're arguing. They were doing that. And Grace and Jacob was looking. And Grace like, you see that? Mom and daddy had to so should we do something? And he was kind of like, no, I think we should let him, you know, work it out. It'll be okay. Um, so the next thing that we see, they are introducing the girls. You know, they're introducing Zora with her dad. They're introducing Sophia with her granddad. And they're doing the whole cotillion dance thing. And when they're doing the whole t that whole thing, I asked myself, Jay Lee, what the fuck is Rochelle doing there? Why is Ro Rochelle ain't got not near kid at that cotillion? I'm just like, what's she there for? But maybe she a point, she's a part of that society. Okay, whatever. Um, 
May walked up to Tasha and was like, hey. And then Tasha's like, yeah, I'm so sorry about all that big mix-up. You know, she's kind of trying to apologize for being a bitch to May earlier within the episodes. And May like, it's okay because everything worked out. And it always does. And she walks away. But we see when May walks away, Rochelle walks up and stands next to Tasha and they look at each other. And this is my thing. I don't, I can't remember if I said this in another video, but I think I said this in another video, the one prior. When they looked at each other, I said, Rochelle is Basie's sister. I, that's his sister. They in cahoots. They is a goddamn on team. That's what I thought to myself. I said, it's something because you don't walk up to a stranger and look at them like that. That's how you walk up to your girl. Y'all's in the club. And y'all two friends, and y'all third friend, boyfriend, is in the club with another girl, and y'all trying to get him caught up. That's how you look when you in cahoots to catch someone. And that is exactly how Tasha and Rochelle looked at each other. So, um, there's a little small scene when they were showing, you know, Charity and Jabari at a restaurant, and they was kissing. Okay, we know in a minute she gonna get to hit that, but we gonna leave that alone right now. Um, uh, next we see, you know, Bishop is sitting down chilling. We see May is walking around, you know, talking to people at this cotillion. Rochelle come up like, Bishop, what you ever had in the fuck? You should be out here cutting the rug. And he was like, no, nah, I'm just sitting down. You know, my wife is busy talking. And she says, oh, well, come dance with me. And he was like, you know, I don't think that would be appropriate. And she was like, Bishop, Rochelle sat down. And said, I'm going to be honest. Um, what did she say? She said something like how she was going to be honest. How she wants, you know, to get closer to him. And he said, the doors of my office at the church is always open. And then she said, Bishop, I want a more personal thing with you. I have from the beginning. I clutched my goddamn on pearls. Bitch, what? Did you just come on to the bishop? And the cotillion and his wife is right over there. Did, really? Really, Rochelle? Really? Okay. And Bishop was like, I kind of got that feeling from you, but I'm not here for that. And she's like, well, Bishop, I felt like you, you know, I felt the same thing from you. And he was like, well, you might have, but it's okay. And then she was like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to be close to you personally. And he was like, Miss Cross. Now, see, what he should have said was, Miss Cross, get your ass Satan, get thee from in front of me is what he should. He should have gave her full fast scriptures to what she was doing was not fair. But he doesn't. May sees them sitting there talking, but she don't do nothing. She just look and she see. Because sometimes all you have to do is let someone know, I see you. Okay? I see your ass. And that's what she did. So, when Bishop turns her down, my lips are being crazy. When Bishop tar turns her down, we see that she walks up to Tasha and she then says, I told my brother this wouldn't work. But Basie said that this is what we should do. I called it probably two reviews ago. I said, I think Rochelle is probably his sister because they kept talking about how his daddy had a daughter, not a son. But I still keep thinking to myself, but why did... Basie gamble all that money away and give his church away. I don't I didn't I don't get how that because Rochelle has money in some way, shape, or form. Um and why that's the part I'm confused about. If that is his sister, what was the point of him getting in bad with um the the mobster people? You know what I'm saying? Because before Rochelle came back, that was his storyline. He was in trouble. Um but I'm like, did he then get in trouble? And then that's why his sister came back. Did he, like, find her? And, you know, th that's my, I don't know. You know, that's the part I have to figure out with them myself. Um, but Tasha, like, you know, I know. I said the same thing. But you know what baby say? And she was like, yeah, you know, my brother, he says it's always one way to, to skin and green leaves. I'm like, y'all sc skin and green leaves now? Okay. Okay. I'll let that go. So, the next thing we see is Jacob who is looking at Zora dance with Isaiah. He's looking so proud. His daughter looks so beautiful at her cotillion in her white dress. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. 
And he like, we should let her go hang out with tonight. We should, you know, let her out punishment for one day. Let her go have fun. And Carissa was like, I don't think we should do that. And she's like, come on, we can, you know, we can grind her later, give her an extra week or two, but we should let her go out tonight. Carissa said, I found comms in her, in her room. They were having sex. And Jacob's whole face went from, my daughter's so beautiful, it was such a beautiful moment, to what the fuck you just say to me? I mean, his whole facial expression just changed to find out his daughter is having sex. So, um... It goes from that to you see Zora and Isaiah having a conversation. And she's like, my parents know, no, my mom knows we're having sex. And he's like, what? And then she's like, yeah. She's like, you told them? And he was like, I mean, she was like, no, she found the condoms in my room. Why didn't you hide them? He was, she was like, I did. They, you know, she, she was stupid and she found them. Why didn't you lie? I mean, he get mad at her. And she was like, look, they also said that we can't see each other. We can't hang out anymore. We can't be together anymore. That's crazy. What am I going to do? What, so are we just going to hold hands? I'm like, again, what you getting upset for, little boy? And she then says, why are you mad? I'm the one in trouble. And that, to me, was kind of crazy. So, you know, you see Jacob looking at them. And he's looking shocked and stunned like, I'm pissed my daughter fucking this boy. It's how he's looking. Like, he's in complete shock. And we then see... Um, Isaiah's mad, so he runs off because he's mad because they can't have sex anymore. Zora then runs behind him to catch him. Why? Because she's young and she's dumb and she's in a, she's in an abusive relationship. So Sophia sees them run off after each other, so she then follows behind them. Like I'll be right back. Let me go. So she follows behind them. Zora and Isaiah are arguing, and he she's like, "Why are you mad at me?" What do you want me to do? It's not my fault. And he getting mad at her. He getting more and more angry. And then he hauls off and slaps the dog shit out of her. Now, he slaps her harder than her mama slapped her. But she took his punch. Baby, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. But Zora, no. Sophia saw him slap her. And Zora, Sophia's like, oh, my God. So, you know, he said, I won't do it again. I promise I'll never hit you again. She's like, that's what you always say. And Sophia then goes back into the cotillion. Because she like, mm-mm, I'm telling. I'm snitching. So she goes straight to Jacob. And she was like, you know, I just saw Isaiah hit Zora. Jacob was like, what? What? So Jacob like, what? Mom like, what? Grace like, what? Bishop like, what? May like, what? Everyone's like, what, 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 what? What the fuck just happened? And where are they? They're in the hallway. He just see this laughter. So as they're all getting up to see what's going on, Zora comes back in and she doesn't have her little shawl thing on her arms. So they're like, did he just hit you? You know, Sophia said he hit you. You said what? I'm fine. They look at her arm. They're like, what are these bruises? Because they then see all the bruises. Has he been hitting you? No, he has. No, I'm fine. Then Isaiah walk in and he looks upset. He looked like he just beat somebody up. He looked like he just hit a woman. And Jacob was like, you been hitting on my daughter? You hit my child? And he's like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. What a little attitude. Man, Jacob punched him, socked him in the face. I'm like, finally, yeah, Jacob beat that little boy ass. So, I'm sorry, that was just, <laughs> got a little bit too hype. But yeah, he punches him in the face, knocks the little boy down. You know, he... When someone is beating your child and putting their hands on your child, that's what you do, okay? That is what you do. Point, blank, and period. So, Zora then mad at her dad for hitting Isaiah. So, let me get this straight. You mad at your dad for hitting Isaiah. You mad at your mom for slapping you for being rude. But you ain't mad at Isaiah for beating your ass. Is that, what, is that what's going on? My thing is... <sighs> That just aggravated me because I'm like, you, you busted. They see the bruises. Your cousin saw him slap you. And do you think that after he punched you in the face, that your face ain't going to swell up with a bruise? You can't deny it at this point, at this point in time. You're going to have a bruise. So she runs off and she's mad at her dad for hitting him. It's a whole mess. You know, so then May is like, why would you hit that boy? He's a child. And Jacob like, I did, that's my daughter. I did what I was going to do. 
And then Bishop was like, I would have did the same thing, son. We see Zora then locked herself in the bathroom. She don't want to talk to nobody. She don't want to talk to her mama. She don't want to talk to Sophia. She don't want to talk to her auntie Gigi. Would y'all leave me alone? And I'm like, do you plan to live in the bathroom forever? You have to come out. You can't live there, boo-boo. So, she don't want to talk to anybody. You know, everyone trying to coast her out of the bathroom. And she won't come out. So, and she said, everyone just leave me alone. Her phone rings. Who is it? It's Isaiah. Baby, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. You keep saying that. Then why don't you stop? Listen, he ain't going to stop doing it. God damn it, Zora. God damn it. Okay. So, my voice is going out because it's late. Um, he's like, you know, I love you. I don't know why I keep doing this. I just get so crazy. You know what? We should just leave together. And go the fuck where? Okay. But, like, dumb children. She's like, you know what? I'll talk to you later. She comes out the bathroom. I want to go home. They go home. You can see the bruises on her arm still. They all leave. Um, we see Bish no, May tells Bishop, catch a ride home with Grace or whoever. I'm going to see my sister. She's in town for one day. Okay, we see that fine. Um, the next thing we see is Charity and Jabari. It's in the bedroom, and he in the bed, and she and her sexy girl. And they finna have sex. And I'm looking like, okay, Charity, you finna get your groove back, girl? So, she get in the bed. She's nervous, and she's saying, like, you know, I haven't been with anyone since uh, Kevin. Kevin was my first. I haven't been with anyone since I had the baby. All this nervousness. And Jabari's like, I've wanted to be with you in this way, you know, since I first met you. So, you was covered in that, you was covered in that man's wife? Cause he was that she was that man's wife when you first met her. I'm just saying. Um, so she goes on to say, you know, I'm just nervous. I haven't done this before. Then she says, I have a scar. When I was having the baby, they had to give me a C-section. So there's a scar. He's like, oh well, let me see the scar. He she shows him the scar nervously, and he kisses it. And he was like, you're beautiful. Your body is great. You know, don't worry about it. Let's get it popping. And you know, they got it popping. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. They got to pop in. So, you know, okay, Charity, go ahead. Um, So, the next thing we see is Mavis and May having their sister-sister moments. For me, Mavis is like, I'm leaving. You know, I'm going, I think she's in like Switzerland, so I'm just wherever, to start a new club. But she's like, what did you want to show me about my club? So, May pulls out the paperwork that shows that she still owns it. But May was like, I don't want to keep fighting for something that I already own. I told you I'm leaving. And May is like, why? You can stay now. She's like, I don't want to say I told you I'm leaving. May then, no. May was like, you got everything you want already. You got your house. You got your family. You got everything. You got your things. What do you want me to stay for? And she's like, because I want my sister back. And May was like, well, you can't have me. I'm like, okay. Say that you ain't for, ain't for sale. Can't nobody have you. And... May then goes and says, you know what, I forgive you. And she's like, forgive me for what, May? You want me to say it? And she's like, yeah, what do you forgive me for? And then she was like, I forgive you for what you did with James to get back at me. I forgive you for that thing you did with him that one time. That one time, Mavis. And she kept emphasizing that one time. And May was trying to look, and she was looking like, is that what he told you? And she was like, I don't know how many times I had to drag your husband up out of here. I can't even count. And she's like, don't you lie to me, May. Mavis, don't, I don't want to hear that. You was lying. And May was like, look, you would, you would, you know, grab on to any slither of a story just so that you don't have to, you know, hear the same truth. You know, May is going, you know, daddy's dead, Max is dead, it's just us left. And May was ain't having it. May was like, look. Give the deed, give the deed to Gigi. Let her do whatever she wants to do with the bar. I don't care what she do with it. I'm done with it. And she was like, I can't, you know, I can't believe you. And then Mavis was like, you know what? He picked you because you was light skinned and pretty. He picked you because you was pretty and light skinned. That's all he wanted. He never loved you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing a Sophia voice or a Miss Seeley voice. Um, you know, he never loved you. It was for, to, it, it's because you would make him look good. You know, you would be good on his arm. You would be, um, good for business. You would be good for the church and his image. You know, that's why he chose you. And, he, you know, he didn't love you. And then May said, 
I think he chose a wife. So what does that make you? And then she left. Well, okay, May. Fire back with them troops because he might have picked her because she was pretty. He might have picked her because she was light skinned. But the point is, he picked her and made her his wife. <laughs> yeah. So what does it make you? So, you know, the last couple scenes we see is Bishop is now waking up. This is the day after the whole cotillion mix up and all this crazy rigmarole. Bishop wakes up and he's shaking. You know, he has, is it MS? I can't remember which disease he had. These, but he takes pills for it. So when he gets up, he's, you know, his, his, he has to take his pills. So he's up in the guest room taking his pills. You know, we then see Jacob and Carissa waking up. And Jacob is telling Carissa, I'm going to go talk to Zora. You know, apologize for hitting him. Um, tell her I should not have done that, but that I love her. And that, you know, we'll get through this together. And Carissa's like... I just wonder where we went wrong. And Jacob was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you know, we've instilled so much in her to be great, to be this strong person. So I don't get how she's letting the man beat her. And, you know, Jacob goes on to say, you know, we can't control everything. You know, Faith did the same thing. The one guy she was with, that she, Faith was with, was beating her too. You know, people can't control what other people do. It doesn't matter how much you instill in them that they are better than things. They'll still live their own life to go through their own trials and tribulations. So... You know, Chris is like, I just feel like it's something in her that's broken and I want to know how I can fix it. And Jacob's like, look, you know, we have her for one more year before she goes away to college. There's a lot of love and things we can do to help her and to fix this um, in a year. As he's sitting there talking, I'm saying to myself, Jacob, you don't even know this, but that girl is gone. She ain't there. I'm like, I know her ass and left with the damn Isaiah. Sure enough, Jacob go in her room. He knocked on the door. She ain't answering. You know, he opened the door of her room. Like, some of her drawers are open. Her phone is still sitting there. And she ain't nowhere to be found. And he like, Carissa? Baby. Carissa. Carissa. And I'm like, why is taking Carissa's phone to get there? They house ain't, you know, ain't that big. Um, and she's like, yeah, what's wrong? What's, what's wrong? She ain't here. And she's like, what? Zora? So her been looking in the bathroom. They open. They open. They, open, they looking everywhere. She is nowhere to be found. She is gone. Carissa looks also. Oh that's the Carissa looks worried. So from there we see you know May walking into the home. Bishop was walking downstairs. Gigi walking up to, and then May. <laughs> Gigi like, man, you been going all night, and she looks at Bishop. I want you out of this house now, and he was like, what are you talking about? And then she's like, you told me it happened once. You said it happened one time, James. And then he just said, so be it. And he left. James, where you going, Bishop? So from there, we see Gigi get a call. Because Gigi's like, what the hell just happened? He did what once? Mama, you done put daddy out? And then she's like, mama. Mama then tell Meryl, so give me some food, bitch. I'm hungry. Okay, I've been driving all night. So, you know, Gigi get a phone call. It's Carissa letting her know. Oh, my God. Zora's missing. Isaiah appearance said he's missing. We don't know what either of them at or if they're okay. They okay. At least Isaiah's okay. He, we don't know if he didn't beat Zora ass. And my thing is, hopefully, he don't beat her ass and then she kill him and she go to jail for it. Okay? Let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, The ending scene... You know, Bishop done left and Bishop sitting outside. I'm like, is he outside of the house where he at, Bishop? Bishop, where did you go, Bishop? And who walks outside? Rochelle. Bishop has left his home and went to the hotel of Rochelle. Lord Jesus. And that's how the episode ends. This was a good episode. It was a good episode. That's a good man, Savannah. If you don't know where that's from, you're young as hell, okay? If you don't know where next hell, and, you know, when you use the mama in the movie, telling her that man is a good man, even though he cheating on her, you know what I'm saying? He got a wife at home. That's a good man, Savannah. That's a good man. But it really ain't. Bishop ain't no good man if you didn't left your wife. Not left your wife, but if you didn't left your wife after y'all had an argument and you go to the hotel of a woman who says to you, I want to be more personal with you knowing you're a married man and you're a bishop. I'm like, oh, oh yes, Kay. And Zora missing and Jacob punched the boy in the face and Sophia stood up for her sister and we found out that Rochelle is really Basie's sister. I'm like, okay, this everything is, you know, the tea that's spilling over. So... That is my review for Greenleaf, the season finale. 
season two. I will see you guys next time. Of course, as you know, I have all kind of videos and reviews up. So check them all out. Until next time, people, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.